Attorney Ron Chapman, uh, the second. Uh, Ron, 10 to 15 years. Your thoughts on, on these sentences handed down. The judge making it clear both parents were responsible, even though it was their son who pulled the trigger. Well, I think there wasn't really much of a question of what Judge Matthews was going to do. We knew the sentence was going to be relatively high. The top end of the Michigan guidelines, I think, topped out at about 83 months. Those guidelines are advisory. A judge can go higher. And as soon as Judge Matthews started giving all of the reasons why the guidelines don't account for the conduct here, we knew that she was going to go north of them and then she ultimately went in the range of 10 to 15. I think she has to. We have an elected judge, we have a community that is very impacted by this and we have a conviction. A jury has decided that the proximate cause does not just stop with the shooter, it extends to the family. And I think that's the message the judge sent today. Ron, I'll give you the polite uh, news conference uh, warning that we are awaiting word from the White House press secretary. When that news conference uh, begins, I will politely have to cut you off. You know the drill. But this oh, yeah. was a case where we were on a collision course between the Second Amendment right to bear arms and, and the right for people just basically to live, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Are we now seeing a change in the way that America looks at the parents of, of people who pull the trigger? Absolutely, and, and this is really going to be the question for the nation. Uh, I said proximate cause earlier. Where does the proximate cause end for an action like this? Um, you know, in, in legal the legal field for voluntary manslaughter, we talk about, you know, doing an act that is so reckless that death is a natural and probable consequence. The hard part here is, can the parents automatically understand that through their actions, death was a natural and probable consequence? This is going to be a very difficult thing for the appellate court to wrangle with, particularly because when you extend this fact pattern to other people, we can get some results that seem a bit strange. Are bullies now going to be liable for the actions in acting out? of an individual engaging in a school shooter. How liable is the school going to be in these actions? We don't necessarily want liability to extend that far. That's a tough decision for the Court of Appeals. Ron, you brought it up. Um, much is being said online about the judge in this case. Does it matter whether the judge is appointed or elected? Well, I think, you know, I, I practice a lot in federal court and I see a difference between those judges. When, when a judge is elected, there is a closer tie to the will of the community. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but that does give us some insight into how the judge may act in certain cases. I think that judges are elected in the state of Michigan for a reason. I also think that federal judges who oversee federal law are appointed uh, by the president. Ron, does this boil down to, to something much simpler in society, which is, am I not my brother's keeper, but am I my children's keeper when it comes to a firearm? And do you see this case, this, this verdict, having a wide-ranging effect on, on gun owners across the country? The answer to that is yes. We are now in a situation where we are in that position of responsibility given this case and future cases. And, I, and I'll say this, the impact here is going to be felt more likely in the insurance industry and in future state laws like a law that was recently passed in Michigan requiring people to lock up their guns. Liability will now be had for violation of those types of laws, not safeguarding your guns. And there's going to be consequences uh, from a homeowner's insurance standpoint when you don't comply with those laws and you certify that you will. Ron Chapman the second. Ron, as always, thanks for being with us. I'm glad I didn't have to, to, to cut you off. As you can see on the right-hand side of the screen, we continue to await that White House news conference. Ron, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dale. You got it. A reminder, you can find deeper dives on all of these stories and more online just by Checking us out on Scripps News on X, on Instagram, on Facebook, on TikTok, and on Threads. As we go to break, an image right now from a cloudy middle of the country right now. That, of course, Dallas, Texas, courtesy of EarthCam. Right now, some rough weather making its way through that area, making its way uh, west. No, actually east, in fact. A severe thunderstorm warning in effect for a few more minutes until 2.15 Eastern Time, 1.15 Central Time. And we still are awaiting that White House press briefing to take uh, hold. Um, White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre will come out in just a few moments. But 
We're also keeping an eye on Wall Street for you. The Dow in negative territory, down 135. On the scene returns in just three minutes. I still can't.